Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Today, I will discuss estimating principal components under the virtual perturbations. This is joint work with Pranja Vasti from Google and Rutgers University, and Ravinder Vijayra Raghu from Northwestern. Okay, let me start with the introduction. So we all know robustness is a key requirement for the widespread deployment of machine learning algorithms from the aspects of security and reliability. Okay, so in this work, uh, we consider challenges from emerging scenarios. The first one is adversarial robustness, where image classification systems are attacked by adversarial perturbations on each pixel. The second one is no precision machine learning systems where data points are stored and processed in few bit arithmetic. So one scenario, one similarity between these two scenarios is that no precision errors are captured by L infinity noise like perturbations in the first example, even though the error may not be adversarial. So, so the basic goal of this study is to design machine learning primitives and algorithms robust to adversarial perturbations. In this work, we will focus on principal component analysis. Now, let me define our noise model formally in the next slide. So we will call it adversarial perturbations. The input data a tilde consists of n points in dimension n. It is generated this way. The original data AJ is generated from some Gaussian, say mean zero and the covariance sigma. So then uh, the adversary knows the covariance sigma and the uncropped data A1 till AM and perturbs each original data or AJ to A tilde J by adding L infinity bounded noise, say the most epsilon. In another word, the adversary changes every entry of each data point by the most epsilon. Okay. So, I wanna, um, so this is our noise model. I want to say that it captures applications like you no know, precision machine learning and adversary training. Okay. So the main question we study in this work is under this adversary perturbation noise model, how to perform principal component analysis, specifically given the corrupted data a tilde generated from adversary perturbation, estimate the principal component in the original covariance matrix sigma. Okay. So in the rest of the talk, I will always use R to denote the rank of the principal component in sigma. So a few more remarks. So when the perturbation epsilon is zero, this is the standard principal component analysis and then I want to compare this with the classic Huber's model, where a fraction of data are arbitrarily corrupted. So our noise model has a very different flavor, where each entry of every data point is perturbed by a small amount. Okay. And I also want to say that our work will consider perturbations measured by LP norm rather than L infinity norm. But for convenience, we will stick with L infinity norm in this talk, okay? So before we describe our results, let me discuss what the properties of the covariance matrix sigma tolerating adversary perturbations. To gain some intuition, let us first discuss robustness criteria for the base case of rank one. Here, we just want to recover the first principal component, say V1, okay? And we will normalize the L2 number for V1 to be one. So it's not difficult to see that the recovery error of V1 under the worst real perturbation depends on the L1 norm of V1. The basic reason is that um, the dual norm of the L infinity perturbation is the L1 norm. So there exists a uh, epsilon perturbation V1 tilde such that the distance between the perturbation V1 tilde and the original vector V1 is epsilon times the L1 norm of V1 itself. Okay, so then if we consider a toy example where the covariance matrix is just V1 times its transpose, 
The adversary can fake most points generated from another Gaussian whose covariance matrix is sigma tilde, that's just a V1 tilde times V1 tilde transpose, where V1 is the we want tilde is the perturbation we mentioned in the previous slide. Then the recovery error will be at least epsilon times the L1 number of V1. Okay. So this is the characterization of rank 1, which shows the connection to L1 sparsity. Okay. The main question we try to answer here is that how to generalize these two rank R greater than 2? Okay, so, so our goal is to define a tight notion characterizing recovery angle. Okay. Okay, so so in this work we provide a robust criteria based on the infinity to two operator norm. So let me go over the definition in this slide. So in the rest of the talk, I will always decompose the covariance matrix sigma into two parts. So sigma top denotes the top R principal subspace, and the sigma bottom denotes the rest minus R, minus R eigenvectors. Okay. And furthermore, I will use pi top to denote the projection onto the top principal subspace sigma top. Okay. Then we will study the relation between the recovery error and the infinity to two operator norm on this projection pi top. Because the operator norm will be the focus uh, of the rest of the talk, I will call it the robustness parameter kappa when the covariance metric sigma is fixed. Okay. A few more explanations about the operator norm. In general, the P2Q operator norm is defined as the maximum over all LP unit vector V. The LQ norm of pi acts on V. Okay. For infinity to two operator norm, the projection matrix always have uh, the operator norm between one and the root term. And I want to mention that this is a generalization of L1 sparsity. Okay. So for, for any unit vector in the subspace corresponding to the projection, the L1 norm of this vector U is always upper bounded by the infinity to two operator norm of the projection pi. Okay. So finally, I want to conclude that uh, the operator norm has rich connections to the cross synthetic problem in analysis. Okay, so, so as I said, uh, the rest of the talk will be based on this robustness criteria, so let me repeat it one more time. So we will consider the projection onto the top principal subspace, and we will study the relation between the recovery error and the infinity to two operator norm of this projection. Okay. So our main result, roughly speaking, is to show that uh, Kappa gives uh, instance-wise a characterization, namely the robustness parameter characterizes the recovery error for every covariance metric sigma under adversarial perturbations. Okay. In the rest of the talk, we will first see upper bound using efficient algorithms and matching lower bound. Let me first go over the upper bound, which is obtained by efficient algorithm. So given the rank R and the robustness parameter kappa, we still decompose the covariance matrix sigma into sigma top and sigma bottom. And we further assume two conditions on sigma. The first one is that the projection of the top principal subspace sigma top has an infinity to two operator norm at most kappa. The second thing is that there is an eigen gap between sigma top and sigma bottom. Say the least eigenvalue of sigma top is 1% larger than all eigenvalues of sigma bottom. Then in the adversarial perturbation model, our polynomial time algorithm will output sigma tilde top approximating sigma top with Frobenius with a uh, Frobenius distance square at the most square root the rank R times the robustness kappa times perturbation epsilon plus some additional error delta. Okay. So this holds for any small perturbation epsilon and additional error delta as long as the total error on the right hand side is at the most of one quarter. 
and then you will take m in the order of r square coupled to the 4 times log n over delta square perturbed samples. Okay, so this is our theorem statement. Just try to give a concrete sense of this of the parameter if we set the rank r to be n to the minus 0.2 and the robustness kappa to be n to the minus 0.2, our algorithm could handle perturbations up to n to the minus 0.3. So compared to the naive PCA algorithm, which only handle perturbation up to n to the minus 0.6. So a few more remarks about the, this theorem. The first thing I want to say is that the eigen gap between sigma top and sigma bottom is necessary to make sure our output sigma tilde top is close to sigma top. Okay. Then I want to say a few things about the sample capacity. The first one is that uh, it gives some it gives some statistic benefits when the rank R and the kappa are small. The samples, the number of samples m will be much less than n. This is similar to sparse PCA. The second thing I want to say is that uh, if we just want a statistically efficient algorithm, we can get a min minimum max optimal sample complexity that is r square times cover square times log n over delta square. Okay, so so you can see a computation versus statistical trade-off between these two complexity. That is kappa square versus kappa to the four. And we know this is tied by assuming the practical click conjecture. The last thing I want to add here is that the output sigma t on the top also has the robustness parameter in the order of kappa. And this is very useful for robustness in downstream applications. So that's all I want to say about the upper bound. Next, let us discuss the lower bound which is an instant-wise optimal <coughs> construction. Given the rank R and the robustness, robustness parameter kappa and the perturbation epsilon, let, the sigma, let, let this, um, sigma satisfy the conditions in the previous theorem. For m random points generated from Gaussian with covariance sigma, with high probability, there exists another covariance matrix sigma prime and the perturbations A1 tilde, tilde AM tilde generated from this new covariance matrix in the same way, such that sigma prime has robustness parameter kappa, and each perturbation A tilde J is an epsilon L infinity perturbation of the original data. So at the same time, we will show that the Frobenius norm square distance between sigma prime top and sigma top is at least the root, the rank R times the robustness parameter kappa times the perturbation epsilon over log m times log m. So the main thing of this theorem is that the lower bound root R times kappa times epsilon matches the recovery error in the upper bound up to the extra factor of log m times log m. But then I want to repeat that as we mentioned earlier, our lower bound is instance-wise optimal, not just min max. So if we put the upper bound and the lower bound together, this is saying our robustness parameter defined by the infinity to two operator norm characterizes the recovery error under the adversary perturbation. Okay. And finally, I want to say we will generalize this to LP perturbation by considering the P22 operator norm. Okay. So let me say a few words about our algorithm. It is based on this semi-definite programming. Just to try to remind you, the input matrix is A tilde, and the target of this program is the projector of the top principal subspace sigma top. So we will minimize the loss under the projection of X subject to its rank is the most R. So we have a trace of X is the most R. And x is a projection, so all its eigenvalues are between 0 and 1. And then we use inequality 5 to control this L1 sparsity. And the inequality 6 is the most important one as a proxy of the infinity to 2 operator norm. Okay. So uh, finally, I want to mention here is that we have ellipsoid algorithms solving it with the efficient separation of oracles by relaxing the last constraint by a constant factor since it is NP-hard. Okay. 
Okay, so that's all I want to say about our algorithms. A short summary, we propose an adversary perturbation model for the emergent scenarios like adversary robustness and the no precision machine learning. So our main contribution in this work is to identify the key robustness parameter, the infinity d two operator norm in recovery. So we show efficient algorithm and we give low bound to demonstrate that this is instance-wise optimal. So some future direction will be to design algorithms for all the machine learning primitives under this noise perturbation model. So thank you. That's all I wanted to say today.